Welcome to the presentation of Pictorial Unleashed into the folds of interactive qualities. On behalf of me, Jeroen Peters, and my co-authors Rosa van der Veen and Amba Trotter. One could state that pictorials were created in response to an increasing awareness for the inadequacy of traditional publication formats to effectively express design knowledge, in particular of interaction design. Pictorials answer the need of a communicative layer that addresses other than the merely cognitive skills of readers and can convey some of the richness of design processes and outcomes. Pictorials can also be seen to contribute to an attempt to make design research results more actionable. Wiskowska et al. analyzed 51 pictorials and presented an actionable palette of six ways in which pictorials so far have attempted to share design research outcomes in actionable ways. These include, for example, referential resources, where additional material is available elsewhere, engaging narratives, where design-led investigations are presented with as much richness as possible or in new and engaging ways, or tacit mediations, providing participatory activities for the reader to engage with parts of a design process or outcome. In this pictorial, we aim to contribute to this list of examples, in particular to the ones that have to do with tacit mediation. In this case, we focus on tangible interaction. There's tangible bits, embodied interaction, and there's just many different approaches based on different foundations, but the use of the body has become common within the interaction design research community. There is a shared sense of importance for physical manipulation that offers particular qualities when designing for interaction, in helping to design the experience of using something or in understanding what is being done. In this pictorial, we explore how we might leverage active physical engagement on the reader's part. So in this pictorial, we ask the reader to actively engage with the pages of the pictorial. We present two different tangible interaction designs that are designed for the same functionality and for the same context. Both of them are allowing people to make, break and manage connections in a smart home environment. In previous work, we've published on a comparative evaluation between the two, looking at the mental models that users create when using these designs. This time around, we focus more on the qualities of interaction, and we try to explore how the pictorial provides us the freedom to, to highlight these qualities of interaction in an active way. The first design is called Interaction Tile. Interaction tile is a centralized design. Connections between various devices are made by interacting with a central device, irrespective of the locations of the devices that are to be connected in the living room. The network connections are abstracted and taken out of context. And the design mainly relies on cognitive skills. It relies on representations and symbolic meaning of icons and colors. So we'll, here we'll use the pictorial as a way to explain the interaction of the design. Having cut off strips of paper, the reader can start to interact with the pictorial by folding along indicated lines. So this design is based around a central object shaped like a rounded cube, the interaction tile. Smaller, similarly shaped objects each represent a device in the living room. Which device these objects represent is communicated by the icon on top of it. Folding the page demonstrates how a smaller object representing a DVD player is placed next to the tile. The green light on the interaction tile indicates the connection is possible. Folding the page a second time demonstrates how another object, representing a TV, is placed next to the tile. The second green light indicates a connection has been established. Folding the page a third time demonstrates how the last object, representing a set of speakers, is placed next to the tile. A third green light indicates a second connection has now been established. The second design is called Nodes. Nodes is a distributed design. Elements of the system are spread throughout the room as they are placed next to the location of the devices one wants to connect. This requires the person using Nodes to physically move around the space to interact with the system and the components he or she wants to connect. The design itself consists, consists of three types of objects. These objects are nodes, start points and end points. The nodes are circular platforms that are placed on or near devices that are to be connected. Start points are arrow-shaped signifiers that are inserted into a node. 
and endpoints have the negative shape of an arrow and are also inserted into a node. Aiming a start point at an endpoint visually completes the shape. This establishes a connection between the two nodes flowing from the start towards the endpoint. Again, we will convey the interaction scenario through the way the reader interacts with the pictorial. First, she cuts out two start points. Then, she makes a series of cuts to prepare the notes page for folding. So where interaction tile has a certain way of constructing every network, in nodes, because of the way it works, there are different scenarios possible for the same functionality of a network because connections can be relayed between devices. In the pictorial, we present this by showing two scenarios for the same network. In the first scenario, the reader inserts a start point into the node at the DVD player, aiming this at the node near the speaker. Folding the page aims this endpoint at the start point and establishes the first connection. The reader inserts another start point into the node on the DVD player and aims it at the node near the TV. Folding the page again aims this endpoint at the second start point and establishes the second connection. Starting over from scratch, in the second scenario, the reader inserts a start point into the nodes on the DVD player and aims it at the TV. Folding the page aims the endpoint at the TV towards the start point to establish the first connection. The second start point inserted into the node at the TV now aims towards the speaker. Folding the page there aims the last endpoint at the speaker towards the start point at the TV, establishing a second connection. The connection is relayed by the TV on the way to the speaker. Some conclusive remarks. So this pictorial explored how active physical engagement with the pages of a formal publication may supplement, or perhaps to some extent replace, textual descriptions of interactions, images or supplementary content such as video. The act of interacting with and experiencing a design research artifact is difficult to communicate without the thing itself. The folding sequences presented in this pictorial are of course no substitute for interacting with the actual designs. These exercises have clear limitations themselves. For example, in their inability to allow free exploration or in the limited sensorial richness the pages provide in comparison to the three-dimensional objects of the actual prototypes. However, we believe that there is value in examining how we might attempt to present interactions when we share our work in the community. To try and get more closely aligned to interacting with the thing itself, as has also been raised by others, if we forego some of the design articulations in the way that we communicate about our work, we risk uh, losing a lot of the value of that work. And to explore ways in which we might transpose parts of the design articulation, the, the richness of materiality and experience, into publications is a worthy endeavor. Um, this kind of work also deals with ambiguity, in the sense that if we try to create a pictorial where some of the meaning is emergent in interaction, then we give a space for interpretation towards the intentions of the authors. But there's also a risk for misinterpretation, of course, and this might be an issue. Uh, lastly, there are clear tensions that are uh, embodied by this pictorial. Uh, we are aware, as was also pointed out by some of the reviewers, rightly so, that uh, presenting work in this manner makes certain assumptions. For example, an assumption of able-bodiedness for the reader, or her access to infrastructure such as a printer. This uh, might be an issue. Moreover, uh, the publishing of this pictorial uh, required a bit of back and forth between authors, publishers and chairs after being accepted because it's designed in a different way and uh, started to push against the publisher's norms for publications. So uh, in itself, it becomes uh, a challenge to play with the expectations there. Uh, I hope we can have some discussion around this now and I thank you for your attention.